name is uh, Jason J. Rock Houston. You're listening to Cataclysm Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.cataclysm.com. And today we're speaking with a legendary uh, guitar shredder, uh, David Shankle. And he's, uh, he fronts uh, the David Shankle group. And many of you know him from his days in Manowar. But he's got like three or four different bands. And that's what we're going to get into today about what, what the man is doing today. So, um, David, why don't we get right into it and uh, start talking about... Um, um, whatever you want to talk about first, but you told me you have so many things you're working on right now, so let's just get into it. <laughs> well, first of all, hey Jason, thank you for having me again. I think it's been some time since we did an interview before. I think one of the first or second DSC records back then. Yeah, it's been a while. That's why I reached out to you. Doing, it, doing an interview then. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's so much going on that is that has happened since the Man of War days and all that, but, you know, to try and cut the fat off the meat, you know, yesterday on the 29th was the uh, anniversary of the Triumph of Steel record again. Wow, which wow. Which I'm really proud of, which went gold and double platinum in Germany. Wow, wow. So I'm, I'm very happy to have that on my shoulder. And uh, I'm involved in three bands right now. Since my time of leaving Man of War, as a lot of people know, I put out three DSG records. Ashes to Ashes in 2001. Those videos, Ashes to Ashes, and then Calling All Heroes, which had a lot to do about, you know, 9-11. Yeah, yeah. And then in 2007, I did the Magic Circle Fest and brought DSG over there with Man of War, and we released the Hellborn record on July 10th in 2007. Then a few years went by after that, and unfortunately lost my mom and dad, and That's I right ended up releasing, and it took me a longer to get that record done. Whole new band, and did the third DSG, Still a Warrior. And each band had different musicians in it, loved them all for what they had to offer and what they brought to the plate. And uh, we put that, the first two were out on Magic Circle Records, but the third one we put out on Pure Steel Records, Everything went fine with that. And, uh, you know, throughout my whole career, I've been doing tons of guest solo works, played on Michelangelo Beto's Beto CD. He's played on two of mine. Oh, really? uh, the Voyage Shred Fest with T.D. Clark, Joe Stump, Beto, then hit all of them, played on the last DSG record on a track called The Hitman. I had Parker Lunger from Queensryche and a whole bunch of other guys. My engineer that's been helping me throughout my whole career, Mike McCarron, did drums on that track, and we had him mix it. Jay Walsh has mixed all three of my DSC records, and John from Massive Mastering does all the mastering. Oh, that's great. And uh, all that stuff has been great for me. Since, since that time, you know, I've had some health issues that were in my life. I got divorced five years ago. Oh. Then I ended up having some hand problems working with a guy that's been a family friend building pallets using a nail gun, and uh, it just beat the shit out of my hand. It caused a bunch of carpal tunnel, trigger finger, but I got all the operations. Everything ended up being fine. My hands are as strong and as fast as they've ever been. Then, unfortunately, I got a tumor. We thought it was cancer. Oh, wow. Thank God it wasn't. Yeah. I survived that. So I've been going strong on that since the health things and haven't had to deal with that anymore. And luckily, I got three new bands. So I'm happy to talk about that, man. Okay, so yeah, let, uh, first of all, I, I want to say thank God it wasn't cancer, but you know, um, um, yes, I, thank you. Know, you. To, to, look, to look at you, you never know that you're having all those health issues because, I mean, looking at you physically, I know you work out and, um, you know, you just. I hate it real good. <laughs> I mean, you're just. A, yeah, yeah that, that's so true. So let's get into the bands, though. Um, three different bands, so I don't know which one you want to talk about first. Um, well, the first band that I had gotten into since after the DSC thing, you know, and, I, and, and, and I'll get into the other ones right after this, is a band called Fionor. Okay. They are out of Argentina, and Gus Fionor is the bass player in the band, and he approached me about four years ago, wanted me to, me to do a guest solo on their last CD called We Are Heavy Metal on Massacre Records, and he brought me in, Ross the Boss, oh, wow. and also Tony Martin, who used to sing Black with Sabbath. Black Sabbath, yeah, yeah. that he sang on one track called The Crying Game, and Ross did the solo on that, and I did two solos on two other songs on their one called uh, In the Darkness and another one called Water Garden based around, you know, the Game of Thrones movie. Mm -hmm. And we did a video on that as well. Record did very well. And uh, we decided, you know, we all were talking to get me over to play with the band. Well, when we did that, we said, let's do a Triumph of Steel tour over there where we're bringing in Dave Shankle, formerly of Man of War, the co-writer with Joey for the Triumph of Steel record, and let's have Fionor, because they've done some stuff with Ross and, and stuff that Ross wrote in his Man of War days, and Ross and I are best of friends. Okay. Our manager, Johnny Pettigrass, handles uh, Ross and I together as well. So we went over there about two, three and a half years ago, and we did a tour, and we did like 80 
an album. I put like the first five tracks together. I wrote from the ground up. And uh, it's basically called The Power of the Chosen One. And we have a track I wrote called Rise of the Dragon because in each band I've done something that you had to do with dragons. Mm. And the, the video is already done called Rise of the Dragon. We're doing the lyric video now with the band in it as well for Power of the Chosen One. Album's done, artwork's done, OPK, everything's done. Our manager is negotiating record deals with a couple of different companies. And uh, the band's ready to get it released when it's the right time. Unfortunately, yeah. this whole coronavirus has stopped a lot of things from happening and has hurt a lot of people. But, you know, a lot of bands have gone back in the studio. For me, I rebuilt my studio, wow. you know. Did two tours with Theodore. The, the last tour we did, we went over and we brought our singer in, Sven, who wasn't on the first tour because he was doing stuff with Wizard and we had a guy named Lobo sing that did a great job doing all the stuff for Eric Adams. Last tour, we had both of them on stage and we did 50% of the Man of War stuff and 50% of Theodore stuff. It went great. So we wrote a record and we're just looking forward to getting it out called The Power of the Chosen One. And it is, Jason, yeah. what I never got to do in Manowar was to do a part two Triumph of Steel with Joey, but this record is my new version of that. And it's not a copy of Triumph of Steel. Yeah. It's just a takeoff of where part two Triumph of Steel could have went. And I did it with this band called The Power of the Chosen One. And we have a 20 minute song on there called The Odyssey in nine parts. And it's a ferocious record. I'm very proud of it. The mix and the mastering. And it's just the Argentina band, Theonore, is like my part two Man of War band. But, you know, a little bit more progressive, a little more modern sounding, a little different. You know, the way I play, the way I do things, very different than in Man of War. You know, when I was in Man of War and did the Triumph of Steel record, and a lot of people seen me live, a lot of people were like, dude, you know, you're, you're kind of this Racer X Jason Becker kind of guitar player thing. And, you know, I did what I was paid and told to do on the Triumph of Steel record, mm -hmm. and I'm happy with it. But when I came out with the Ashes to Ashes CD, uh, you know, a couple of years after I got out of Manowar and I graduated from Roosevelt University Music College with my bachelor's in music and jazz classical guitar, everybody was like, did he just go through some metamorphosis change? Your guitar playing is completely different than Triumph of Steel. Well, I could always play like that. That just wasn't required yeah, yeah. for the Man of War record. And it really gave me a chance to break out, Jason, and show the world what I am as a writer, a composer, you know, a musician, how I really play my versatility, melodicness, classical guitar playing. And it was an eye opener for a lot of people to see the real me. And I did it with Ashes to Ashes, Hellborn, and Still a Warrior. Now I'm doing it again with the Fionor record. Oh, wow. So that's the first band. Now let me ask you real quick, um, all, you know, all these years of doing a David Shankle group and you're kind of a main guy and you, you know, you can kind of go in there and do what you want. What's it like to be, go in a band like this and be part of a band, you know, where you're, you're collaborating with other people and, and everything doesn't fall on your shoulders? So. It's, it's, um, it's, it's good because I got along with everybody yeah. and I liked the band and I knew, I, you know, I could bring something to the band more than just, wow, we want Dave Shankle, the guitar player, formerly of Manowar. Yeah, That's yeah. great. I get a lot of bands that come to me month after month that would like to have me be in a band with them and want a piece of, let me say this the right way, as, as Manowar fans would say, history would be, wow, if we could get, you know, the former death dealer known as the Shred Demon yeah. that was in Manowar. A lot of bands would like that, people that are in metal. Some bands don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and it doesn't matter, you know, it's all who you are, but, you know, they have the right situation, yeah. the right guys the right talent. I felt it was a good fit to try this. And we ended up coming up with an album and I like spent a lot the singer. I get along with everybody. And in my opinion, we wrote a great record that has to do in the vein of a Man of War old, older school style, but with more modern sound. And I'm very proud of it. And, and I hope the world will get a chance to hear it, see the videos. And you know, there's an old saying I have. Yeah. You know, when I do my music, nobody touches my my painting man i put a frame around it i put it on the wall mm -hmm. you want to buy it buy it if you don't move on or let's run it up a flagpole and see who salutes it yeah, i yeah. can be a team player yeah i you hear know? you i hear you that's that's most important now now let me ask you um you mentioned ross the boss i mean um 
yeah. and how much you've enjoyed um, you know getting to know him and working with him over years. Um, have you heard his band Death Dealer? But he has with Sean Peck because um, they have a new album. Yes, coming out. I know them. They're yeah. dear friends of mine. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And um, now I was just curious in regards to the David Schenkel group. Are you still doing that, or has that been put on hold? Again? No, right now DSG is on hold and it's on the shelf. Okay. I did three records with yeah. that. I can go back to my band anytime I want. I hear you. But I am. These bands are my bands, and I'm their band. All okay. three of these bands were in. We're all together in the plasma pool, and that's what I got with Theonor. And then came along my good friend Tony Angle, who sings in a band called. Side, which is no longer together right now. And Tony and I have known each other for 15 years, yeah. and I and I jammed with them for a while and did a couple of farm rock festivals, opening with Doc and Queensryche, wow. uh, Slaughter, several other bands. And Tony's had a pretty good career with Bailside. And recently, we just lost the bass player in Bailside, Bob Hilton. Mm-hmm. Hilton, and it's weird. We'll fix that, Bob Hilton. And uh, I get a little choked up on that one. Today's his that. birthday. Wow. And we lost him lost him just over a year ago. Wow. And, uh, you know, so it's a pretty important day for us today. Yeah. And Tony and I always wanted to do a project together. And that project is called Grave Rain. The record, all the recording is done. I go in the studio this weekend with Joe, our engineer, and Tony and I, and we start mixing the Grave Rain record called Destination Aftermath. And let me tell you something, brother. Okay. This record is a concept record. Uh-huh. If you think about what's been going on in the world, what has been happening, war, politics, viruses, devastation, what would be left if the bombs really did go off? Yeah. Would there be good people, bad people? Would there be a sanctuary or nothing? And uh, it's a combination of Tony's mid-level, gut-powerful voice that he has meets David Schenkel from a DSG, progressive, melodic, touch of man of war type in your face. Dave Schenkel, typical neoclassical, progressive metal power music of my, me and him together with a lot of orchestral, symphonic stuff. And it is right now one of the most favorite projects that I'm glad I'm in. I love all of them, but this is something Tony and I have wanted to do homegrown. We got several labels involved that we're working with at the moment. We did a song for a B-movie that's going to be coming out. It's a horror movie. Really can't uh, mention the name yet, but we did a remake of a song we were asked to do. We were paid to do it. The, Uh The people loved it, and it was taken, and it's going to be in a movie soundtrack that people will know about on our site fairly soon. So uh, that was a really cool thing for me and Tony and uh, putting the final touches up on that. And that's a band that between me and Chicago and Milwaukee, where I run the school, I could travel back and forth to rehearse and get that band and play out local and, uh, and travel around and hopefully get on some festivals depending on how things go. But that's a homegrown project where I can go, you know, once, twice a week and rehearse. That doesn't happen with these other bands. They're in Argentina and yeah. Italy. Wow, you know what wow. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Now, let me ask you, um, like you said, for many years, um, people, when they hear the name David Schenkel, they think of, you know, Man of War, David Schenkel Group, or they think of, oh, you know, David Schenkel, he... That guy can really shred. But um, in talking to you, I, I think part of appeal for you to uh, get involved with these other bands and stuff is because I'm assuming there's more to David Schenkel than just being the shred guy, you know? That is right. Not only that, but I, I studied classical guitar. Yeah, yeah. If you go on my YouTube page, you see me playing classical guitar pieces. There's actually going to be a classical guitar piece on the Grave Rain record called Romance, you know, that shows a whole other side of my playing. And I think people will be surprised when they hear the cover song, the remake that we did for this movie, wow. because I kept it in, in, a, in a heavy radio style, so it would be true to the song, but we put my swing on it and Tony's swing, and it just turned out heavy, heavy radio, and we couldn't be more proud of it. As long as the movie people are too, we like it, and we get paid, so that's a good thing too. Yeah, of course. <gasps> and, you know, I think you know? I, I think uh, metal fans will be surprised to learn how many of the... They like, will like it, you know. Yeah. It's, those two songs... That song and the classical guitar are going to be bonus tracks that will be added on the record. And I, we're already putting ideas together for the second record yeah. and a lot more orchestral stuff and more classical guitar playing in between pieces and in the music. Because, you know, it's it's time for me to really start showing that style. And when I say classical guitar, I mean sitting down with a classical guitar and playing classical pieces and composing classical pieces. 
Yeah. You know, besides yeah. neoclassical rock stuff, that's a whole different thing, you know. Yeah. But um, and I know you know that. Oh yeah, so, I was just that was, a lot going on yeah. with that. I was just going to go on and say, I, I think metal fans would be very surprised to learn that you know a lot of the metal shred guys and even somebody like R uh, Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple. They, um, that's how they got their start. Is they started like by studying classical music, and then they got into doing their rock thing. You know, exactly. It's all how far you want to study and how far you want to take it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. So that project, you know, is, is is in the works right now. And then I have another new band that a gentleman Joe Caputo came to me in a band called Holy Tide, which is out of Italy. Oh. They had put out a record. That were three songs mm. into right now for that new record, Holy Tide, out of Italy, and that's a whole other progressive neoclassical symphonic thing that's kind of like, you know, if I had to put a, a what does it sound like? Yeah. Well, it's us, but if I had to drop it in a bucket, it would be like Rhapsody of Fire meets Nightwish, but with no girl singer, but with my style of guitar playing. Wow, wow. Okay? Wow. What? And it's the same thing for kind of Grave Rain, yeah. but Tony's this in-your-face, low-cut singer with a wonderful range. It's got like a Coverdale meets Bruce Dickinson. It just hits you right where it counts. He's a great lyricist, comes up with a great story to be a great storyteller to the music I write for him. And he and I just click. There's absolutely no drama, and I just love it, man. And it makes life really easy when you work with people like that. Well, that, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And talking about your man, longtime manager, I mean, that that's dedication, that's loyalty. So, you know, I love hearing stuff oh, yeah. like that. And, um, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. Johnny, you know, he's been my right arm guy forever. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I just got to say, Dave, you know, you're talking about, you know, all this going on with the coronavirus and bands not being able to go out and perform live. And, and that's that's um, an awful thing right now. Very sad. But I, I, I got to thank you for the fact that not only are you such a busy musician putting out so many um um, you know, uh, records and stuff. But I, I love the fact that there are bands that um, we're going to release stuff this year because of all this coronavirus. Oh, we're we're going to hold off and release it until next year. I mean, um, I love the fact that you're still putting music out there because I think if bands can can't go on tour, at least you can um, maybe give the fans a little something. You know, release a new album. Yeah, you know, you have to. You have to. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of internet stuff, and yeah. that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Guitar players offering lessons, doing live things. You know, live mix and stuff like that, you know, if you're an engineer, whatever you want to do to keep it out there. We're getting the records done. I mean, two out of three bands, these That's records pretty good, are basically yeah. done. That's pretty you good. Know, the Theodore's done. Yeah. You know, as soon as the Grave Brain's done, my manager is people, bam, here's the OPK, here's the record, here's the photo shoot, everything's done, the mastering. So it prepares us as we get into the new year for shows and as things can open up, bands can do her. I mean, we already, through whole Holy tight are still deposits are being held yeah. for these next 27 to 32 shows coming into like September this time next year to go to Germany and 
play at some other countries if this corona thing will slow down. Yeah. So you have to prepare your army and your warriors now and have your music ready to go by right after the new year, ready to get a proper release date. So as, as promoters, magazine people, record companies, and concert buyers want to buy bands and put festivals together, you can't be this band going, well, we're still working on a record, you know, the corona's held us up. Yeah. Bullshit, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you, since this corona started, when it hit, it made me come to my studio room, completely redid my studio, wow. updated everything, started working on the two records, and in some way, the corona's been awful for everybody, and in some ways, it's not to say good for some people, but it made me stuck at home. All my students are online. Yeah. and just sink my money into my studio, into my students. Thank God for them. I love them. I've been teaching 29 years professionally. Wow. And to have the time to build a studio to keep everything updated. And, uh, you know, it's been a good thing. And I'm just 24-7 music, teaching, writing, composing, and keeping the refrigerator full when we need to. You know what yeah. I mean? And staying healthy. And I wear a mask, man. That You know, most people... Wear a mask. Protect yourself. I wear gloves when I go out. If I go to a shopping cart, you know how many people's hands have been on a shopping cart? Yeah, just think wear, about that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. gloves, man. Yeah, yeah. Wear gloves. Hey, uh, uh, another thing you wanted to discuss today is you told me something you have a new line of guitars, so let's get into that. I am very happy to announce. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. I've been with a lot of companies. I was with ESP for 16 years, Dean Guitars for five years. Uh, I was with Court Guitars way early on. And then I spent some time with Chris Grossman in Romania. But I am proud to announce that I am the happiest in my life right now that I have a whole new line of guitars coming out from Jeff from Viper Guitars in California. Mm. This band been coming at me for two years. My manager and I finally started talking to him, checking out his guitars. He's got a handful of guys that he already uh, endorses that have been with him for a while. All nice guys, great players. You know, Jimmy Bell's with him. He's a friend of mine from Autograph. A couple of other guys. And uh, we decided, he says, I want to build the Dave Shankel, you know, shred machine. And I told him, you've never built a shred machine yet. And <laughs> this will be your greatest accomplishment. Wow. So he sent me a couple of guitars over the year, you know, at the beginning of this yeah. year. I checked them out. We started, you know, talking about things. And we designed the new six-string and seven-string David Shankel DS6 Viper shred machine mm. and the David Shankel DS7 Viper seven string and it has the most deepest cutaway. It is a one of a kind. It's a bolt on neck, but when you see the design that we came up with, you would never know it because the way it's designed and the way the neck attaches to the heel of the guitar, yeah. it is like your hand is sliding on a on a neck through body. It's absolutely beautiful. And obviously it's EMG pickups, all I use. Taylor Tremolo Systems, top of the line. I've been with Gary Taylor Tremolo since 1985. And with a David Seiko long uh, Taylor vibrato bar. And, uh, you know, my custom frets. We got my custom logo at the 12th fret design. We designed the headstock, the entire body. You know, it's the first guitar I'm using that has the sustaining act, but that was custom designed for me. And I use it in a melodic sense and not just somebody to kick it on to sustain a note. People will see when they see me play mm -hmm. what the deal is. And uh, that one's being painted right now. And we're already designing the seven string. And we're going to be coming out with two six strings for me, two seven strings, an eight string, a double neck. And, uh, you know, in different colors, different styles, you know, artwork, graphic stuff on the seven string for me. And people will be able to get these if they want them. If they don't, that's okay. They're built for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if they like what I do, great. If you don't, that's okay. There's a hundred other thousand people that do. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excuse me. that reminds me of something I want to say to you for all the Manowar fans, too. Sure, sure. There's an old saying that I learned from Joey a long time ago when I got Manowar. And he would always say this to the other bands and other people that would come see the band play. And not so much other bands, but just people. They'd be, Joey be, oh, have you ever seen Manowar before? And they'd go, oh, no, no, I haven't. That'd be great. And the attitude with Joey would always be this. If you've never seen the band before, come see us. If you like us, let me give you a CD, you know, give me a T-shirt, 
sign you up, be, be a part of the team and the fan. If you don't like us, don't fucking come again. I don't care. There's enough people that do. And that's really it. You can't make everybody happy. You know, you got to do what you do. Yeah, stick yeah. to your guns. You're, you're going to have enemies and you're going to have people that love you. I do not give a shit, Jason, yeah. what anybody thinks. If right, you yeah. like me, you like me. Who thinks who's faster? Me or Badio, Chris and Pilatera? We all are friends. That's we cool. all have taken pictures together at NAMM. We're all in that same plasma pool together. Like who you like. Yeah. Opinions are opinions. People are entitled to them. But just because they have an opinion doesn't mean necessarily that opinion is right, even though it's theirs. And unfortunately, sometimes that can cross the line with people. Yeah. And you get into heavy discussions and that can ruin friendships. On Hey, what do you think about Amp Tone or, or this guy's plan? Who gives a shit, man? Worry yeah. about your own stuff. Yeah. Take care of your own, like who you like, build your life, your career, and make the best of it. You only live once, man. That's yeah. how I live. I like everybody. You yeah. don't like me? I, I don't care. Go, go on. Go away. That's, Goodbye. That's kind go of, home yeah. and practice. Okay? Yeah. Fuck off. You yeah, know? That's kind of my I attitude in life. I, I only care about the people that, you know... You know, not to be yeah. rude, I'm 58 yeah, yeah. years old, and I don't play childish games, and I don't care what anybody thinks. Mm. If you're on our team, great. If you're not, then... Go away! I don't care. Now, 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 I just gotta say that's a great attitude as far as like um, saying you, you know, all you, you and all these other great guitar players are, are, are friends and you all get along. That, that that's great to hear. But let, let me ask you: you mentioned about having like um, you know people behind you. Have you ever thought of having? I don't know if you ever have or if you do. Had like a David Shankle street team where you know fans kind of you have fans out there that kind of try to help promote. Yeah, we've had all that before yeah. when it was MySpace and early Facebook. We yeah. had street teams and stuff like yeah. that. You know, that's kind of a kind of died out yeah. kind of thing. These days, man, distribution with your record and getting it out there everywhere if you have a label behind you is what you need and swag and having a good website yeah. and, a, and a portal through your Facebook, Twitters, and YouTube to put any of your videos up so you can share the stuff with social media yeah. until you can get back out on stage excuse me, and have product that people want to buy and see. But you got to keep your face out there and let people know that something's new coming. Or what happens is, in some cases, yeah. not all, out of sight, out of mind. So true. And you know, and I got a lot to talk about, and I got a lot of people that want to listen, and I got a lot of people that don't. That's okay. I don't yeah. care. But I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something. Like you said, um, part of the reason I reached out to you, David, it, um, I did realize I was going back and looking at some older interviews that I've done. I thought, it's been a while since I talked to him. I'm going to hit him up, see if he's interested in doing another interview. But I will tell you, in, in that time since you and I have last talked, so here's the thing. I, I think part of the reason you're you're still here and doing what you're doing is because um, you got that attitude. you know. And, and um, I, I think the other part is, you know, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're constantly busy. And, and I, I just think... Um, People can say, oh, you know, he's the former guitar player for Man of War, and, and that's, a, that's a great thing and all, but there's much more and to David Schenkel. And past, and I'm happy for yeah. that time, not to interrupt, and Ross made his legacy yeah. in that band, and so did I. When I came to Man of War after Ross, yeah. he and I were already friends. I didn't fill his shoes. I brought my own, and you can hear it in that record. Oh, you can so see true. it in the videos that are live. They're out there. They're everywhere. Not Joey, Eric, or any of them can take that away from Ross and from me, or from Donnie, or from Rhino, Rhino, who I love to death, that I helped bring in the band. What you're one of my favorite drummers in the planet. Love him to death, Rhino. Yeah. You know, as well as many other drummers. But he was my boy when we were in that band together, and he made a legacy for himself out of that band too. And nobody can take that from us, whether you are a man of war fan or not and people yeah. like Ross like me they like Carl God bless him whatever's going on with him and what they think of this new guy everybody's got their opinion I'll just leave it there and stop at that but yeah. I will say this out of all the Man of War records none of them went gold and double platinum in Germany like the Triumph of Steel has and to this day and that was in 2005 wow. back when the Triumph of Steel record went platinum Joey says it right in the video on the Earthshaker Fest and it's already gone double platinum and was already gold before that no other Man of War record in the history of that band's career before me or after has hit that mark yet and I'm glad to be a part of that and proud of yeah. it and nobody can take that away from me whether you like me or not what an there accomplishment you know. but I, but my, my point here is 
uh, David Shankle, when you bring up the name David Shankle, you got staying power. I mean, you, my, my whole point is you've done all this, you know, since, and um, you still got a huge little fan base for yourself. So, I mean, people yeah, hear the name I, David I, I do what I can. You yeah, know, yeah. you mentioned something about keep going. Well, there's one thing that I always have lived by the three A's attitude, aggressiveness, and appearance. I never stop, man, and it's gotten me this far, and I'll keep doing it until they lay me in my grave, and hopefully whoever cares about my music or anything I've done will live on after me. But I'm trying to make the best of life, and that the Lord gave me my hands back, and I didn't die from cancer from the tumor. I got a wonderful girlfriend running a wonderful business. I love all my students that have been by me over all the 29 years. I've been teaching thousands and thousands, thousands of students. Some of them I put out there in some pretty big bands and have gotten them to Berkeley and wow. GTI and all that. And this is what I do. And I just keep going until, you know, the, the time doesn't go anymore, man. And hopefully keep building new fans and the old fans stay with me as long as they can and enjoy my music that I write and stay up with technology and hang out with the people that I know are my friends and stay away from the people that aren't because that's negativity and I don't like negativity in my life. I like positiveness and uh, that's the way it is, man. That's just how I live right now, man. Yeah. You know, um, I know your time's limited, but before we wrap this up, just a few more questions now. Um, in regards to the new guitar line that's coming out, do you have an official release date when that's going to come out or is that something you're still working on? Uh, not yet, but we're, like I said, the six strings being painted now, yeah. that's done, and then we're going to be putting a nice promo together, any video that will be launched through Viper's website, my uh, uh, Facebooks and social media and YouTube. Obviously, Nam got canceled. We yeah. would have been launching it there, wow. but we might fly out to California in January and do a little show thing with me and a bunch of the other artists he has at this uh, live radio station thing that they have where bands can play. We're talking about that. More news will come because there is no NAM. So when I do release the guitar, I will make a really nice video talking about it, showing it, playing with it. There'll be a nice draw up in a Photoshop of the picture of the guitar, Piper logo, picture of me, everything that's on it and says what it's got, where you could get it, the Piper website and everything, because, you know, there is no NAM to unveil it. Yeah, so yeah. it has to be unveiled online and through videos and our social media. But that's coming soon. That and is coming yeah. soon. And after guys Jump like me that... Piper yeah. Guitars, man, yeah. California, the new DS6 and 7 shred machines, they're coming, and they are, hands down, the Lamborghini Ferraris of the six and seven string when it comes to shred machines, and you can play any style on them. Wow! Now, now for a guy like me that's um, not a musician, doesn't play the guitar, uh, what's what is the difference between having like a seven or eight string guitar? Well, it's simply you have more strings. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I, when you have more strings, yeah. you have a wide variety of notes that can be played. Okay. The musical range of tonality. You know, some guys, you know, will have a seven string and tune it to yeah. A440, or they tune a full step down. I tune a full step down for all my bands. And it's like, I like it. I got an eight string. And, and, and for me, because I've had guitars that are 29 frets. I had a six string wow. B from ESV, ESB 29. Then I got the Dean V that was made a seven string 29. That gives you higher ranges, but the frets get really close up there. And I use mandolin frets on the last night fret so I could get my fingers in there. But my point on an eight string, if you're tuned to A440, then you could drop that lower string down to like an F sharp. You can't really do that if you're already tuned yeah. to full step down because it just gets so low and muddy. It's hard to really have good definition. Mm -hmm. So for me, on an eight string, I'm tuned to full step down. So the first seven strings from the low B all the way down is like my regular seven string. I put a high A above the high E string oh, wow. so I could get up to the 24th fret and get that higher screaming, burning bumblebee sounded in, in your face because I got the extra high string and then the rest of them are like I'm playing a regular seven string. You just got to get used to yeah, when yeah. you go to make a D chord at the second fret that you got to jump up on that string because that high E string is an A string. You just got to, it takes a little while to get used to because yeah. you got an extra string, but it's also wonderful for our, for our arpeggios and tapping arpeggios because you have more musical lanes like, like 
on a keyboard. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. So um, I, I want to ask you, um, in regards to all the health battles you recently um, went through over the last couple of years, um, was there any time that you had to stop playing or it affected your playing at all? Yeah. Well, yeah, when I first started these hand operations, they were like two, three months at a time. Wow. I was on a ton of medicine. I could still teach, but I could not pick or put the, my, the hand in my guitars or anything, you know, off and on for almost two and a half years, man. Oh, you wow. know, I would hold it and try and pick, you know, it was started with my left hand operations and my right hand, then back to that, then the carpal tunnel because of everything that happened. You know, every time I turned around, North Shore University wanted to put me on the slab again. It caught me and that went off and on for like two and a half years, man. Well, man, talk I had about... a throat yeah. operation, then the wow. tumor, and another arm operation. So, you know, I played when I could, but I couldn't seriously play for almost three years, well, man. talk about making a comeback, I, I mean... Yeah. Talk about making a comeback. I mean, you, you talk about kind of going nonstop, and I mean, that's literally the only thing that ever stopped you from doing anything. And I, I'm glad you're still right. able to play and that you're coming back. Um, I, um, right. And that's why I'm glad to talk to you. I, I didn't know you went through all this, so I'm just glad you came back, yeah. you know, on the other side. That's, I have no problem sharing it. A lot of the fans know yeah. because some of the stuff was put up on Facebook, not all of it. But it is what it is, and, and I'm happy that I'm here. Yeah, you course. know, the yeah. Lord did not see fit for it to be my time to go. And frankly, I, I must not be done pissing enough people off so I can keep shredding on my guitar, doing my music. And like I said, if you like it, you like me great. If you don't, the friggin' go away. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 that's, yeah. And that's, I don't care, yeah, man. That, I got yeah. enough fans around the world and local friends and fans that'll see me play. I like everybody, but if you don't like me, well, I feel sorry for you. You know, go <laughs> yeah. find somebody else to like. I don't give a shit. Yeah, you're missing something you know? if you don't. But, but anyway... <laughs> Um, yeah, let me ask real quick about your, your teaching. You, you mentioned that a couple times, teaching guitar, and I know you're getting ready to give a lesson um, when you get done with this. Um, and you mentioned uh, doing it online, so if people if people were interested in that, how, how could they go about contacting you? Yeah, you know, we, we run the Milwaukee Music Academy here in Milwaukee. We have a website for it, Milwaukee, Milwaukee Music Academy, but uh, they can get a hold of me directly. Okay. I have three personal Facebooks, and the main one is David Shankle, then there's a David Shankle two and a David Shankle three. Why do I have those? Because they get so f filled up like many other musicians yeah, yeah. and you can't accept everybody. Then I have fan pages, DSG fan page, we have the Grey Brain page, Holy Tide, we have Fionor, I have a personal David Shankle official fan page and people can reach me through there but it's really best if you go to my main Facebook page, David Shankle and you can send me an inbox message if you're interested. I have Twitter, I have Instagram but I'm not on them that much. I'm mostly, you can find me on my main Facebook, David Shankle page, and you can send me a message if you're interested, and we can go from there. And, and um, just two more questions, and I'll let you go, David, because I, get, I know you're getting ready for a, a guitar lesson now. Um, in regards to the, all the new music uh, you, you have coming out, um, will we see any music videos for any of those? Yes, we have the video for Rise of the Dragon off the Pionor record is oh, done, okay. and we're about 50% done with the lyric video, which is featuring the band in it too, for the album title track called Power of the Chosen One. We're just waiting for anything to be released until my manager and all of us finalize a record deal. Of course. Everything's set in stone, and then everything has its its channel. It has its mm. right way to be presented, to come out, so the world can see it and present it to the fans through the record company and all of us in a professional manner, and that's how that will be for Fionor, Grave Rain, and Holy Tide. Well, well I, I just want to say this, David, if, if you enjoyed talking to me today and doing this interview, uh, as each of those albums get released, I'd like to like do a follow-up interview to promote each one. So you, Other, could... you will get personal copies from me. You're a true metaler. You know, you're a great guy. You've always been good to everybody. You play the best music. You know, you're out there supporting rock and metal. And, you know, it's guys like you that really help a lot to keep bands going and keeping everything alive and wanting to talk to artists to help get their life and what they're doing out there. So let me thank you for having me. Oh, I appreciate that. And, and like you said, I'm just I'm a metal I'm a metal fan and I really support the bands that I that I believe in and try to get the word out that's what it's all about and it's all about networking and final question for you um, I was curious as far as when you were coming up who are some of your guitar heroes or guys that influenced you uh, you know when I was growing up that changed from over the years yeah, yeah. when I was very very young my father turned me on to Roy Clark he oh. used to play in the Roy Clark band it was on the Hee Haw show oh, back wow. in the day yeah. you know but before I was ever even thought of my dad 
dad was a guitar picker, and if it wasn't for him, I would never be playing guitar, God mm-hmm. rest his soul, Amazing. him and my mother. Wow. So they were the ones that, that found that path for me. Uh, but in my earlier stages, you know, before I was even a teenager, my dad threw me onto Roy Clark, Jed Atkins, and Andre Sokovia. Then when it started getting into the rock world, I was into the guys like Michael Shanker, wow. and, uh, you know, in my teens, and then Uli John Roth, and I was a big Steve Vai guy very early on in my teens, as I was heading to 20s. By the time I was getting 19, 20 years old, I was already in and doing the whole Paul Gilbert, Jason Becker, Marty Friedman thing. I was already hip to what they were playing and was already studying stuff online and already had gotten college in me for studying music theory and classical guitar. And then as my playing was progressing and my music was expanding, I really, one of my favorite guitar players still today, and I don't have any idols, yeah, but yeah. people I respect yeah, yeah. that I would walk up and shake their hand that had major influences on me is Al Miola. When I was a kid, one of my friends, Howard Anderson, who taught me how to teach myself, but we used to be in a band when I was like 13, 14 years old, he handed me this album, and it was called Elegant Gypsy. And I was a young kid in the Steve Vai, and I went, who is this lawyer-looking guy? What the fuck is this guy with this black suit on and white shirt? Well, I swallowed my words the moment I put that record on and heard him play, and I went, holy shit, that guy changed my life. I went back to my bedroom and was like, what's all this muting he's doing and this cooler double picking? So he was a major influence on me. Another guitar player that had an impact was Alan Holsworth. You know, I liked the early Frank and Baldy stuff, these monster fusion guys. You know, I liked Jason Becker for what he did because, you know, he stood out. Steve Vibe, Frank Marino from Mahogany Rush. I loved what he was doing and how he used effects back then because nobody were really was doing it and it was like Hendrix Lips and Frank Marino and you gotta remember I was a mid-age getting into my late teenagers when these guys were in their heyday wow, I wow. loved Robin Trower my favorite blues guitar player to this day and always will be God rest his soul Johnny Winters hands wow, wow. down well, you know, and, Johnny Winters uh, and, you know, and, and, that was for me those were the guys and as I just got older I, I, I learned to appreciate Sean Lane was another guy I really liked as a guitar player God rest his soul he was a monster player I saw him when he was a 13 years old playing in Black Oak Arkansas and I was a few years younger than him and he was wearing wolf boots and I was like oh my god who's this kid you know and we all know you know what he grew into be so uh, you know definitely respect him and his playing and, and you know and guys like Chris and Pilatera, Michelangelo Badio Joe Stump we're all cut from the same cut of clay we're all in our own plasma pool but we're all in our different corners of the plasma pool you know what I mean we all are in the same world but Different, and they're all great know? corners. And I yeah. love all those guys. I love yeah. them all, and they love me. We're all friends. And they're all great corners, being. And this really is the final question. Yeah. What was at the point in your career when you realized that you were starting to influence other play, or, you know, other people or, or players that were coming up? I think you know. I never thought about that. Yeah. And, you know, I was just flattered if somebody liked me enough, yeah, yeah. And enjoyed my playing, and wanted to buy my records. But as time went on. You know, through my Manowar years, I've seen a lot of people in videos of people doing Manowar songs and, you know, trying to learn my solos and people reach out to me going, can you teach me a solo for this song, that song? And, uh, you know, and students that I have helped become great shredders and do their thing. And, uh, you know, it's flattering. And there's a lot of guitar players out there that have guys, you know, wanting to copy what they're doing. But, you know, what I have to say to the young generation, don't really try and copy anybody. There is nothing wrong with emulating and learning licks from other guitar players and their techniques and their styles. That will work for you and be beneficial for your playing. I also recommend getting a teacher to take lessons, find the best guy in your hometown. You can watch a hundred videos on YouTube and you'll find some great players you've never heard of and go for great players. The problem with that, you can't stop that video and talk to that guy in the video and be hands on. You can rewind that video a hundred times and still not get it. Some of these guys having a teacher one-on-one in a room or over Skype is your best bet because you can only get so much from videos but then again that depends on what level of play you you are and what you're searching for and what 
you really want out of it. So there's something for everybody and try and create your own mountain that you sit on and create your own style so people will respect you for that and not go, oh, he's another Ingve clone. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? well, well, thanks, Dave, so much for doing this today. I really appreciate it. And, and just to let you...